Good evening. Good evening. We are here and once again it is our great pleasure to be in your reality. This is a special occasion as we would call it in terms of our visitation. It is the winter solstice of De Sombra 21, 2013, uh, one year after the closing of the nanosecond in terms of a period of accelerated energy. And we are here, uh, let's say, at the home station, speaking to just a few people. It is uh, George and Sue this evening who have come to uh, mark the turning of uh, another chapter in uh, the change over years. And we'd like to take the opportunity to perhaps uh, uh, speak to everyone in, in general out there in the world, whether this is uh, made available or not, it is still a, a delivery from We the Peas that will be received by those in attendance and it is meant as a fine-tuning to this turning point in time. So we welcome you, George and Sue, and uh, Thank you. things have changed uh, tremendously since uh, the closing of the Nano, yes? Yes. Indeed, indeed. And yet they have not changed at all, right? Mm, yes, that's right. Right. In other words, the sky is still there, you can drive your automobiles, uh, the grocery stores are providing supplies, the confusion within the media is greater than ever. People are out shopping and buying and celebrating and rejoicing in whatever way they can. We'd like to give a general commentary to bring you and everyone out there up to snuff as to what is going on. One year ago, you as a people completed an important marker in time, a very narrow window, so to speak, that uh, accentuated an acceleration of energy. And that acceleration of energy then facilitated a rearrangement, an awakening, and a re-stimulation of aspects of your DNA chain. We have referred to it as have had the scientific community as so-called junk DNA. In actuality, it is simply aspects of the DNA chain, the double helix, that uh, appear to be inactive, dormant, or sort of just hanging out there, as if they are vestigial of something that is unnecessary. Often on your planet, your scientifics, your people will claim their own hubris by saying, uh, if I don't understand this, then it must be nothing. And that is a form of operating within a limited capacity of the DNA. To review, you are, as a species, a product of genetic engineering that occurred over the last 500,000 years. Prior to that time, prior to 500,000 years ago, there were and had been many active lines of civilization, all of which had been influenced by colonizers, invaders, manipulators, beings who were labeled gods in various terms and beings who had superior understanding of the dynamics of the cosmos. Specifically, throughout the past millions of years, there have been, quote, superior beings who understood how and why and where 
to utilize the electromagnetic spectrum. And that is the range of frequencies through which information, data, etc. is transmitted by vibration. High vibration, low vibration, dense vibration, spacious vibration. Information is about frequency and information is equated with light frequencies. Over the nanosecond years, 1987 through 2012, the entirety of humankind has been pulverized, uh, manipulated, pushed through a sieve, uh, entered the eye of the needle again and again in terms of being participating in a grand implosion of energy frequencies. These frequencies are cosmically oriented, they are oriented by feelings of beings, by duties along the lines of time, by a convergence of many civilizations that agree to perhaps cross paths in specific areas of the electromagnetic spectrum. In other words, perhaps a large cosmic family reunion that all of the members don't even recognize that others are there. You are now in the post or after period of this great joining, this great confluence of energies. The aftermath of these accelerations and joining of frequencies is now coming to light within the, let's say, DNA strands of humankind. It is becoming more and more evident to all peoples around the globe. Uh, and this is because of the double-edged sword of technology uh, by way of computers. Uh, it is becoming more evident that your ancestral stories, your history, is far more richer and has greater meaning and purpose and direction than anyone had previously put together. All of the technology that you are operating with today has been given to you over the last 100 years, 50 years, some such as part of, let's say, moving the human experiment forward, while at the same time locking it down into a deeper sense of disempowerment and a abdication of what it is to be human. Double-edged swords, of course, occur throughout the lives of time. And at this juncture of the winter solstice, you can all look back over the last 12 moons and see that as the joining point one year ago, the crossroads, the opening of the road to Zibalba, where energies aligned to connect with the womb of the great cosmic mother, the center of the galaxy. Such raw power, endings, endings, many endings at the end of the nano that predicated brand new beginnings. Our reminder to everyone is that New beginnings sometimes can rise out of the ashes. Sometimes they are blessed with rebirths and joy and weddings and celebrations. Sometimes rebirths must be fostered under adversary, under challenging situations. And so be cognizant of your own place in the journey, that a place that uh, is perfect for who you are 
on your soul's journey. If any of you find yourself in a situation of confusion, overwhelm, feeling overburdened, acting as if, or feeling as if, what's the point? Our advice is to acknowledge how you feel. If you feel exhilarated and happy as if you could fly from the North to the South Pole, pay attention to how you feel. Your feelings are running the gamut of emotionality at this time. The key to navigating any point in reality, any aspect of the electromagnetic spectrum, any dimension, any state of consciousness in the garden of the mind, any frequency at all. All of these areas of being are occupied, they are fostered, they are structured by states of consciousness. The key to embracing and, let's say, exploring states of consciousness has to do with being aware that you are conscious in the first place. Ah, I am a thinking being, therefore I am. How shall and will I navigate my I am? Now, when we say this to you, you may all go, hmm, yes, yes. But it's because of the lives you live and the times in which you live. It is very challenging to stay on point. And the nano years are complete, they are over. And so to offer you a new stance of being, uh, a, a new way of, of exploring who you are, the challenges grow greater because the stakes grow greater. And you only gain the victories in consciousness when you meet challenges. When every day is a picnic, well, every day is a picnic. So these are a few reminders of sorts uh, that the years from 2013 through 2027 are the change over years. And they have their own theme to them that is equally as important as navigating the nano years were. On one regard, from 1987 through 2012, you were climbing the mountain. Now you have to move from the top of the mountain down a different path, a different way, not the way you came up. And so it is new territory and it can be slower sometimes to go down than it is to go up. This is a metaphor of consideration. Mm -hmm. So George and Sue, we uh, uh, are going to enjoy a little bit of time with you and we want to give that general statement whether uh, this is heard or not by others it is our message to the world at large as you celebrate uh, a very joyous and special winter solstice mm -hmm. so let's Thank you. let's talk a little bit to be relaxed and uh, be on guard in case it comes out to be one hour a cd length it, it has been the year has gone by so fast it feels like right now and you know Sue that's a very important point you have made because many people have said slow down it doesn't appear as if anything has slowed down the year has flown by so it is fascinating to hear this statement that you are able as many people have said to equate that the year has flown by and it does not seem as if things have slowed down yet in terms of the economic model the the success of a governmental model the success of 
establishing new structures all seems to slow down and collapse. That is, again, Pluto in the sign of Capricorn does not bode well for any government to set up new systems, right, George? I would agree. <laughs> what highlights the healthcare system? Yes, well, the healthcare system. And too, just yes. the thing with the budget, <coughs> where the budget, they, they yes. were delaying it. Yes, everything on that level is going to go to greater and Stalemate. greater conditions. Stalemate. Yeah. Stalemate, stagnation, <coughs> the inability to get along. So, in your own lives, each of you, here and abroad, there will be some manner of dismantling. When you go with the flow and feel the flow rather than simply blow it off, you're going to get more mileage out of it. As Pluto is in the sign of Capricorn, Pluto would be, let's say, the force that would start to wear away in a very powerful uh, type of energy against the stubbornness, the solidness of Capricornian systems. Many people during this transit will start to discover that some of the things they have been doing perhaps that they thought were to regenerate themselves would actually be doing things that would degenerate their skeletal structure. We will leave that mystery to be explored. In other words, people accept as truth something because it is on the internet or the radio or, 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 or because someone says it. And, and so there, you are in a time of great confusion now. And this again, astrologically, would be what? Neptune in Pisces. Neptune in Pisces. For how many more years, George? 12? 12 or 13, yeah. Yes. So the next 12 years, expect that you are, as a people and as individuals, moving through fog and territory. The nano years provided you, through we and others, with all the tools that would sustain you through the course of the labyrinth, the maze, and some of the other challenges. At a general level, all of humankind is being tested on their ability to wield the sword to their own benefit without creating destruction of anything, including themselves. Mm -hmm. But a knife or a sword is handy if you want to slice some bread and veggies and things of this nature. In other words, wield the power that you have through technology and all aspects of being, including the mind. Wield it with gentleness and yet to nourish yourself and to create new ways. This is the test. Pluto to Cancer, you understand? Uh, Capricorn to Cancer, Pluto mm -hmm. opposite. Mm -hmm. You must learn to transform the ways in which you garnish your power. If Cancer, opposite Capricorn, represents the roots of your being, the roots of the tree, on a spiritual level, the Kundalini is residing at the root chakra. You follow? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it comes up the tree. And then when you think of the symbol of the tree, what comes to mind? Tree of life. Tree of life, tree of knowledge, the tree of trouble. Yeah. Tree, of trouble. tree of Eden. Yeah. Yes, the tree of Eden, Eden. And Eden is an interesting uh, subject. Uh, the original word E-D-I-N was reference to where special people dwelt or something of this nature, or where special occurrences happened. So, the tree is literal and symbolic on many levels and and so pluto in the sign of capricorn is will make it difficult for all governments to pull off any type of dependability they may want to appear as big brother and overbearing and, and downright tyrannical but uh, underneath they are losing their footing they are dying there is a, a death there as well you will be in this, this overwhelming uh, impotency, uh, sort of transition of power, 
uh, well into 2025 or some such. And this is a time for people to dive into the opposite realm of cancer and to pull up their own power and to find out who they really are. You call forth that Kundalini energy, it will rise within you. It is ripe now to awaken each and every person. This is the revolution of the mind, the awakening of humankind, stepping forward into the realm of, let's say, the celestial visitors, the ancient gods. Mm. Ask us a question, if you would. Well, this is George. I would, I would, in in looking at this change over time period, with especially with Pluto and Capricorn, it seems to me that Pluto is also about passion. It's not just about dismantling and you know, and things decaying and falling apart. It is ultimately about rebirth, regeneration, re-energizing something. And so, but in order to do that, it's like Capricorn is about what? You, what's your purpose? What's your work? What did you come here to do? What did you come here to accomplish? And so if Pluto's in Capricorn... Capricorn is also about work with integrity. Oh, and yes. And how can we work with integrity and honesty? And that is where the skeletal form and crystals fall in because if you have brilliant crystals you have a good structure if you have brilliant strong skeletal bones you have something to support you and this is what the world is suffering from the decay the support system yes of integrity please continue and so you know the the whole key with the deceleration and things going down is is that that's just it is the, when people lose their purpose, they lose their focus, they lose their integrity, they lose, when, as that is being dismantled and decayed. And it, allow us to add something if we can. All of that is perfectly on track to lose what is extra, what has not been important. We've always said that you are in a time of important choosing, and every choice you make accumulates great amount of energy, and yet many of those choices are unrecognized. And so all the things that are happening are absolutely in attunement with the times and its purpose, the dismantling, the rearrangement, the finishing, the ending of many old agreements. And then a reshuffling, a reorganization, a, a scattering of sorts, so that something new can be rebuilt. It's important to, as a metaphor, remember that the ancient structures in Egypt, the three great pyramids, great pyramids and its two uh, 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 complements, uh, were at one time covered in limestone. They were brilliant and could be seen and uh, from the distance and, and the sunrise, the sunset, the moon, they glow. Reflection. Mm -hmm. Yes, an incredible white limestone. Today, all of that has been removed and it was slowly carried by small humans at this point to Cairo, where it built the city of Cairo and its ancient buildings. Mm -hmm. So something great was dismantled and yet something new was built and yet that limestone carries all the frequencies and the memories of what was originally in the Great Pyramid which was used for let's say multiple purposes. Mm. So things are destroyed but they are sort of rescattered, rearranged, reseeded with frequencies again. So yes. it's not totally destroyed. It's, oh, no. it's changed in form. And, and let's say that, have you ever been to a party and you arrived just at the right time and, and then maybe someone came hours later and the party was already on a different swing? You, you had to be there for when it was that way? Mm -hmm. That's sort of how that limestone was on the pyramid. Mm -hmm. It served those 
who were around for those aspects and they were there for oh, many many millennia many because the pyramids are quite uh, let's say old built by uh, the uh, celestial colonizers one batch of them for their let's say power devices uh, it was pyramids were built for multiple purposes and their location was allowed the energy that was built within the pyramids to continue to vibrate uh, around the entire earth. Anything that is done there today still has a small frequency resonance, uh, not as powerful as it used to be. Those pyramids definitely have been turned off or the volume has been turned, turned down, down, so to speak, yes. But they, they could be uh, resurrected uh, again in certain timelines and then this is the other point about history and figuring things out is that timelines do run parallel and they cross each other and this again creates for confusion in understanding where you've come from and where you are going so ask us more about your own lives or whatever you want insight on or what you see happening to humanity Well, one thing for me is, and this is what I was leading to with this little Pluto and Capricorn, the change here, we're going to slow down, it's where it feels like things are still going really fast, is it seems like as I, as structures around me all are shifting and changing personally, but then I see in the world that it's the adjustment. It's like, okay, well, how do I know the, so that's what seems speeded up, or what still seems like it's still adjusting to change or just or like when you it's and sometimes it feels like the car just stops and you have to get out and walk and you get stronger because you got to walk i mean i don't want that to happen i want us to still be able to drive and do everything else but it seems like like adjusting to the change is what makes me feel overwhelmed sometimes well does, many, does that make sense yes it does many many people are putting on a brave front and it's because they are not in touch with their feelings. You are, as you know, mental beings, astrologically, uh, the air signs, then you have physicality, yes, the earth. earth signs, then you have the water signs, emotionality. emotionality, and then you have the fire signs, the spirit fire. And some people are blessed with a let's say an even spread so to speak they can access these various domains of uh, information uh, others are top heavy you've heard that expression uh, they may be all fire all water all air so they are, are at a sometimes great advantage and great disadvantage all people are different and yet each lifetime challenges you to gain in great experience. Right now many people are feeling the confusion of the times and the media and its broad various broadcasts and the technological stories and blogs and news and this it is designed to stop you. How is that? It is because it is so top-heavy with information at a very quick speed that for most people, the more you expose yourself to it, the more exhausted you get because the neural pathways cannot take it all in. The designers behind all of this are driving this as a way of overwhelming humanity so that you just feel overwhelmed. When you feel overwhelmed, you surrender more. You say, I don't care what this costs. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Because you are basically, basically treading water in very quick rapids. Almost impossible to do, you follow. Mm -hmm. And so after a while, you cannot tread water in quick rapids. And you must then surrender and go down with the flow of the river. Uh, which is fine if there's only a bit of rapids, but rapids imply rocks and other things in the water that make it turn white and run faster. And so this is another metaphor of people having the sense to slow down and to manage their time 
and to say I can't do this I can't do that or I don't want to versus being slowed down or creating some way acquiescing agreeing all right uh, it's hard for me to slow the ship so therefore I will dream this up with someone else and on this level we will do this and then there's no question about it boom it's finished mm -hmm. there is a large gap between the conscious mind which we have called the P in the garden of the mind 13 to 30 cycles per second large gap between that aspect of understanding reality and the unconscious mind four cycles per second or less uh, the area we call the, the potato and that's the area that knows what's going on that's the area of the mind that is large and that has a, a grander, God-like, high self picture of reality. The P, distinguished by a teeny itsy bitsy P, uh, has a lot of chutzpah, has a lot of power. It is the, the jet, uh, jet driver, the pilot in the jet, but it doesn't always know what's going on at all. So that conflict is, is, is in play now within humanity this conflict uh, on a mass level can create great stress uh, in individual lives but eventually uh, this next year it looks as if this conflict between what the conscious mind in humanity thinks it knows and what its unconscious mind knows may have to come to some sort of uh, real, real alignment and really shock, shock humankind into uh, changing direction basically when you have to slow down you it's about changing direction and changing direction is a very good thing peace yes one thing that that uh, is associated with that is this in the beginning of 2014 in this new year we're going into Venus goes retrograde today that's a personal yes planet. that is a big one and in the sign of Capricorn, Capricorn mm -hmm. signifying that a uh, good time to re-establish your business plan yes exactly and uh, your own authority within your life and then really look at the quality of and the worth and the value of what you're doing rather than you know, money for money money for money or spreading yourself too thin and, and this will be six weeks it is retrograde roughly about six weeks and then I think the next retrograde that kind of almost overlaps that is Mercury goes retrograde and I think it's Aquarius Pisces dance again then Mars goes retrograde and stays in Libra so all the personal planets that deal with you know your life your passion your life your desires, your intentions, you know, your worth, your value, your business, they're all going retrograde. And Saturn's going retrograde. And Saturn's going retrograde. Since our vehicle was making a note of this, she was going to talk about it a little bit in her, her general letter there. And so what this is saying is um, take another look at, as you said, personal planets, your personal life. You know, from Babylonian times and these Babylonian times again um, rise out of the area of Anunnaki colonization the area that is currently modern-day Iraq old-time Mesopotamia Meso re referring to heroes of old uh, and Mesopotamia uh, then being called the land between the two rivers so in Babylonian times which which then were let's say preceded by Assyrian and Sumerian times from the Babylonian understanding astrology and astronomy were considered to be let's say one and the same astrology was called an understanding of the stars astronomy was considered to be the laws of the stars and each were considered to be so important and this again 
is from with these roots from Assyria to Babylon or Babylon back to Assyria to Suma all of this takes you back to the old visitors the Anunnaki or those who to earth from heaven came allegedly from the planet Nibiru and also as we have been reminding you uh, tricksters uh, uh, extraordinaire those who have made an explicit point of covering their tracks and obstificating who they are, creating all manner of Neptunian glamours around every aspect of reality and your perceptions of reality. And in fairness, this is the reality, the the type of civilization gain point that you have entered into as a species and you have been interacting with being such as the Anunnaki and others for time out of mind time out of mind so many civilizations uh, so many dramas of development preceded the intervention of the let's say recent uh, incurrence of the Anunnaki about 500,000 years ago. But that is only the most recent uh, drama that you are as soul species, all, all of you, Anunnaki humans and all others, that you are agreeing to play out, to recapitulate. Now that all of this is coming to a, a new flourishing you will be dismantling, disregarding old things. You will be birthing, uh, transmuting something new inside, awakening uh, that old DNA, switching those doors open. Some people uh, literally establishing new, new, new lines of DNA in order to be fully human and to meet head on, face to face, frequency to frequency, all manner of cosmic visitors. This is not new, there's been many humans who have had encounters, and many of you have had encounters and you said, wow, that was weird, but you didn't even know you were meeting an ET. In other words, as we have said, it is possible for, for beings to walk among you, to mix and, and to meet with you but usually you sense something is strange ask us something about this we want to prepare you for some strangeness that is coming in 2014 okay <laughs> <clears throat> so have there always been a certain group like the Masa masons who knew about the anunnaki and what was happening on the earth so this is an excellent point that you bring up there have always been scatterings and smatterings of separate groups who had parts of the story. Remember, the building of the Tower of Babel in ancient Babylonia was an act by one of the Anunnaki sons, mm -hmm. a defiant act by the son Marduk. His father was Enki. Marduk was born on the planet Niburu, so he had extra power so to speak he wanted his own spaceport as the records portray and he dared to build the tower and the other let's say fathers grandfathers etc said no no you cannot do this we cannot allow you to build your own fire here naughty naughty you can't play with matches you are not mature enough so to speak this is how the Anunnaki treat one another. So they scattered people, they messed up their minds, they created a major confusion of languages amongst all peoples. We've said it sort of scrambled the telepathic understanding between God knowledge and human knowledge. It, in larger terms, it shut down some of the doors of the DNA, created more junk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In larger terms, if you can understand that certainly 
some of the ancient designers of the human race were geneticists. They worked in laboratory, but they worked also by mind and frequency. They set humankind up so that you could be uh, receive upgrades, so to speak, at a distance. You understand this now because your double-edged sword of technology allows you to have a computer running on a battery that may connect it to a, a motor, and a rotor, whatever these yeah. words are, and then you are connected to wireless and it looks as if you have a magical box, yes? Yes. And then through this magical box you can receive updates, yes? Mm -hmm. And no one has to be around you. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine that the human, the human being uh, the physical body is exactly like this computer and as the computers evolve you are showing yourself that you are in the same point of evolution as the computers here's the problem in the 1960s some of your global elites came to the conclusion that as the population was increasing, it would cross the line of food availability and production and it would crash and there would be global starvation unless they did something. At this point, there was, let's say, a revival of an ancient uh, technology of what is called genetic engineering in terms of food. And boom, boom, there you had it by uh, the late 90s, you, GMOs were around the planet. Ten years later, everyone is sick. All the GMO countries are very ill, making lots of money, but helping the depopulation. So, long ago, genetic engineering was seen as a potential to alleviate certain problems. Uh, yet, in the larger scheme of things, it created problems. You have now crossed another one of these barriers where the acceleration of technology like the acceleration of the growth of population is now crossing the ability for humans to understand the technology or the availability of food it's like the availability exactly right. you get the two x's there mm -hmm. more population not enough food therefore genetic engineering uh, 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 technology. technology to advance people's minds not neurologically able to adapt as you said the overwhelm they cross and again a culling of population people will melt they will fall off but each one each crossing uh, designed to depopulate on a larger soul <coughs> agreement on an Anunnaki plan remember no Anunnaki can do anything to you, no colonizers, no lords, no gods can do anything to you that you have not agreed to participate in. As soon as you use the power of your mind to say, I'm not available for this anymore, I am dreaming, I wake up in this dream and I say, this is fine uh, for those who want to be in this reality, not for me. I, will, I, I agree, I create, I intend to be another way. I'm a, a being an extension of Prime Creator and it is my innateness of my beingness that thrives when I creatively decide to be clever, <laughs> to be innovative, mm -hmm. to be a systems buster and a respectful renegade and allow others to engage in whatever foolishness they want to limit themselves. But I will hold out. I will hold out for my own victories in consciousness. And I will create happiness, peace, cooperation, trust, friendship. I may have to wait a while for it. But as a soul being, it is my test of character to be able to remember this, no matter what dimension I am in. This is the key to consciousness. Staying conscious. That's one to write out. Oh we are going God. to call this staying conscious. Yes. Staying call conscious. it staying conscious. Staying yes. conscious. And that is your entire uh, entirety of being in all avenues. And you can see, as George said, there's a certain passion within Pluto, yes? Yes. But passion can make you crazy. Mm -hmm. And passion can take you into pleasure. It can take you into competition. It can take you into jealousy and revenge and, and all the dark things because it has so much power. 
And then you can say afterwards, what was I thinking? And so that is the trick between staying conscious and, and following certain magnets of desire and some, many of them meant to be explored. So staying conscious is the underlying theme of the post anno nano years. What else do you want to know? You know, many strange things will be brought forth in 2014 that will completely rock the human paradigm. And we are asking you, George and Sue and everyone else out there, please, to keep your feet on the ground, to own your energy, and to recognize that no matter how much you think you have known, it is a small amount of preparation for some of the global neural shocks to the human chakras that are coming. Oh, so how much does the Obamacare play into this? The Obamacare is a, is, let's say, already been renegotiated, reannounced so many times. Now, there have been stalwart uh, opposition to it from the beginning. Republicans and many others have been out there hammering and, and, and doing all kinds of manipulations. There are others like our vehicle who votes with her mind and in her mind it's just made up that this is not going to work and it's not good for humankind and that's just the way it goes. There's many other ways to take care of people besides this coercement of uh, invasive uh, medical technology. You're also, so this is not, does not bode well. Next year, 2014, uh, April 21, you have another Uranus Pluto square that will square and oppose the USA sun. Uh, Obamacare, if it's still swimming by then, is going to need uh, more than about uh, a million life jackets to hold itself up. Uh, it, it, systems of a governmental organization are not being innovated at this time. It is poor timing for it, very poor timing. So anything like that is going to go down. So there will be all kinds of considerations, failures, security, and as we have said, those who get coverage may get coverage, but there will be no one to treat them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have coverage, no problem. Uh, is the doctor in today? No, he won't be in for a month. You understand? Yeah, I've been having like that with the dentist. Yes, like that. so so the whole entirety is a metaphor to wake people up to see that guess what, folks? Um, any system that you want to implement must be fair. It must be simple. It must be across the board. And this is not it. And in the uh, in the meantime, you're on your own. On the larger scale, the Anno Nano years provided you with all manner of vibrant alternative ways of taking care of yourself. The post Nano years, people all over the world say, take care of me, take care of me, put me on the doll, put me on this, put me on stamps, put me on anything, prop me up, get me up out of bed every day, send someone over to wash me up. There are masses of people who can hardly stand up anymore energetically. So you are watching uh, a desperation of, please make a system that will help us when there's no help for this. This is part of depopulation, culling, reorganizing, uh, finding those who can adapt and those who cannot adapt. It's a very confusing times. There are also very high intensity frequencies uh, being used all over the planet to confound people, to confuse people. On one hand, there's the desperation of these frequencies is so intense and so great because people, the revolution of the mind, people busting out of old belief systems and, and rebelling against authority is growing in massive levels. In the next two or three years, the volatility between uh, governmental or ruling structures and the awakening people will create all manner of, of bloodshed and problems. Um, those to whom we speak, you are smart enough to know to stay out of these things. 
this is a an out picturing of these energies you will watch this because some need to learn and play in this way those of you who operate with the mind will find that the insights, the, the larger pictures, the, the power to create, the innovation, all of this will grow tremendously within you to, to ride this wave of an awakening humanity. And ideally humanity will awaken to its own inner spiritual responsibility and not anger necessarily at the duplicity of governing systems and that the one percent of Eddie Snowden's revelations that are out there mm -hmm. have already created a, a very let's say fiery spiritual energy all over the planet wait till 10 percent gets out <laughs> and they will keep being revealed and revealed so that eventually people will say enough enough I can't take it Oh my goodness gracious, how could this be? And the more that is revealed, the more you will know that this is how far humanity has to go to awaken from its collective denial about how manipulated you have been. You with us? Yeah, stay conscious. If you, if you already know, yes, yeah, stay conscious. If you already know, then it may be painful to watch, but each revelation will give you more power to restructure your life with greater decisions. Ask us something, please. How much time do we have, Georgia? We have 21 minutes. All right, we we'll need to fill it so, all up here. But um, will more be coming out about how the United States government is spending the money? Oh, or not only. It, it will come out about black projects. You see, Edward Snowden was considered to be, oh, by Dick Cheney, he went on and said he's a traitor, take him to the guillotine. That's perhaps an exaggeration, but that was the thought form behind it. Um, recently, people are more and more pointing out that the 1% that has been revealed has, has changed the course of humanity. In other words, the big ship was headed in one direction and, 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 and these 1% revelations changed those little side wings. What did you call them? Trim tabs, on, like on a big ship's rudder. Trim tabs on the big rudder. And just that little flutter of 1% has changed the direction in such a way that uh, young people uh, losing faith in droves in the fun of the electronic world yes. because they are recognizing just from this little one percent how they've been totally set up and no one really enjoys being made a fool of to that great degree and this is only one percent as we said imagine when ten percent comes out and when Pluto gets to the halfway point of its journey through the sign of Capricorn, 15 degrees, oh, it will be very volatile, very, 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 very volatile. Next year, it may get there at the end of the year, perhaps, we're not certain, but in April, it will be 13 degrees to trigger the USA sun. So it's going to be big revelations, in explosions within, not just as Sue said, the misuse of money and black projects, but the ultimate misuse of power and betrayal and according to the extraordinary length that the founding members of this country went to to emphasize freedom and liberty from all manner of control and tyranny you have swung in the complete opposite mm -hmm. direction and so Edward Snowden will inspire others and again some people think that he may be uh, part of an MKUltra project revelation of the method he's definitely connected in some way but there's more more to the story than anyone recognizes and peace yes I was gonna say that what comes to my mind is is these previous Pluto cycles when Pluto was in Capricorn you had big revolutions you had and so those timelines are weaving back into now and so you think people start to find out things and have revelations Ooh, and get yeah, in the streets yes. because I mean this is what happened before and the prevailing systems yes, were yes and, and this is why 
the again the Babylonians through the Anunnaki etc aligned astronomy with astrology yes there was the location of this heavenly body and here are its effects and in order then to hide this power over time they were separated what will happen next year and the year after and the year after will be people who have been shut down to some of the ancient knowledge will really begin to have their DNA doorways switched on and they will begin to think in larger terms and have greater respect for those who bring forth ancient knowledge. Our work with you, our vehicle's work, is a mission from her soul through to our star system to bring to you ancient knowledge that helps to empower you in the now, to enable you to find the purpose of your soul's journey while you are in physicality. Mm. Often when you are deceased and you get out of the body and you spend a little bit of quote time there, it becomes clearer. They are too separated. Our work is to bring the soul's vision, the soul's mission, the soul's understanding and that expansion of mind that the Anunnaki have uh, along the electromagnetic spectrum to bring it awake within you. And the signs of the times, the frequencies, the energies, the cosmos, the prime creator, the players, the name of the game. It is about opening those doorways in the junk DNA. So be alert to greater knowledge coming. Don't fritter yourself away, but have a good time. Be cognizant of the kinds of frequencies that you surround yourself with, physical, electromagnetic, friends, family, all of this. Don't lose your way. Be dedicated to do the work. It's fun to goof off now and again. What did you call it? Sloth? Sloth. 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 One of the, yes. one one of the, the seven, seven deadly, deadly sins. sins. Well, let's say every one of those seven deadly sins can be fun for an hour or two. <laughs> <laughs> not lying and cheating, but no, a but little gluttony. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. well, not even the uh, jealousy is not a good one either. No. So, but uh, again, uh, as long as you don't stay stuck, keep your frequency high, don't lose your way, there will be distractions. All people are being distracted now to see if you will pass the test. Stay true to your soul's mission. We have offered you many clues to who you are. You are now more, uh, let's say, walking the journey by yourselves to see what you are worth. Can you manage these frequencies? Of course, things have changed and uh, our deliveries and where and what and how will always be available for you. We are always, let's say, seeking good, solid students and there are always, let's say, new minds that are awakening. But the journey grows more complex. At the same time, there, are, there is a greater simplicity. It is coming to your lives. A greater empowerment, a greater purpose. Do not lose heart, please. The new era is all about utilizing the heart chakra. Sometimes you know you have a heart chakra when it is wounded. Who has a question for us? This is George. I, yes. I just wanted to say that, you know, it's still ringing kind of in my head that staying conscious staying conscious because neptunes and pisces especially too right now in this whole transition and so the ironic thing is, is it seems like part of staying conscious is, or the key to staying conscious is keeping your imagination intact keeping your i'm imagining i'm sensing i'm feeling i'm becoming more aware because <clears throat> you know there's so many distractions and so many things that people, their imaginations, it becomes just worry. 
they're always worried. They're imagining the worst will happen. Well, if you think about will... the absconding of the imagination through <clears throat> smartphones and every manner of electronic device. They are, Entertainment. Yes, yeah. they are bombarding everyone with so much detail and they are taking up every moment of a person's possible imagining. And then when that person is not imagining with the machine, they may be eating their food, but still imagining with the machine. And then they collapse and they take a shower and they go into dream state. And so there's very little time for the imagination to, let's say, say hello, play around with you. Remember the movie Peter Pan? Yes. Yes. And in Peter Pan, there were the children, yes, mm -hmm. Wendy, etc. And then there was Peter who came flying in. And he never grew old because he came from Never Neverland. And then he had an accompaniment called Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. The fair. Yes. And so Tinkerbell was here, there, and everywhere, and buzzing around. And, 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 and Tinkerbell stimulated the imagination of the children. You don't make room for Tinkerbells anymore. Mm -hmm. And this is why we have said to you over the years, sit down for a few moments, watch the squirrels jump around, watch the birds tweet. In other words, watch nature move. Tinkerbell sort of represented the spontaneity of nature moving here and there. You couldn't predict where Tinkerbell was going to move. Mm -hmm. You can't predict where nature is going to move and when you allow your eyes to take in the enjoyment of um, the snowflakes falling, the leaves tumbling down, the birds coming on their migratory routes, the squirrels looking for nuts or, or invading the bee bird feeder, winter's season, the drifts coming up of snow. Patterns of the clouds. Yes, these, yes, exactly. These are the spontaneous aspects of nature that have their own Tinkerbell pattern. When your eyes take this in, it builds new neural pathways. It strengthens what's there. It strengthens what it is to be human. When you don't make time for this, there's no time for the imagination to then receive its own creativity based on these new or refreshed neural networks. The machines do not refresh your neural networks. They close them down into one or two lane highways. They babysit them. <laughs> not even babysit them. They really limit them. This is the crisis in the human revolution of the mind. It is this that will stimulate anger and it is this that some of the globalists want. They want people to be out there angry and acting barbaric because then they will have every reason this is Sue. to lock you down. Yes, Sue. This, this reminds me of something that someone pointed out to me. It's called a knockout game. Oh yes, where they are simply going and hitting people and, and uh, it's an epidemic of sorts. It's being blown up bigger than it is. In the larger cities. Yes, it is a sort of part of the racial tension and um, you are going to see more violence over the next number of years. That's why each of you that has been trained in grounding, dropping a grounding cord, um, strengthening your auric field, right to left, left to right, back to front, front to back, that nice glow of solid energy. And then opening the heart chakra to raise your own vibration and the vibration of humanity. You may not always know what you're doing, but you will learn along the way. As we've always said, you are here to witness some very difficult challenges that humanity is poised to go through. And again, staying conscious, saying, is this what I want to do? Is this how I want to use my time? Is this who I want to hang out with? Is this the level of conversation I want to deal with? Is this diminishing or augmenting? the power or the agreement of my soul's journey here on earth. And again, you can goof off now and again and give a little away. But don't lose your way, any of you. Because, well, there's 
lots of time to do it over and over and over again. And the gift of this era and the post nano world is to get it right and do it right. To liberate not only your soul, but to liberate humanity's belief system in the tyranny of manipulation, of worship, of adoration, of governance that has come down through these Anunnaki visitors. This is the tyranny you must overcome. You will not fight them or bomb them or destroy them. You will simply stop believing in them. You will stop putting your faith and your money, your time, your, your hope, your prayers into them. They have disguised themselves in every manner of being. They are not the only players in the game. There's lots of deceit out there, and as you've said, George, Neptune and Pisces, uh, 12, 13 more years. Um, if you live that long, those of you who shall, and many of you will, ooh, you will become experts in sniffing out lies and deceits. Because you will be fleeced over and over again by your own projections of what you want to think something is versus what it is. So the, one of the largest challenges of humankind at this time is to not give your power away to something because it sounds good or to government programs because they'll cover you because they want your votes or friends who want to pay for everything or, or deals that are too good to be true or uh, the sweepstakes that comes in the mail that says walk uh, to the next state and you will win the lottery. <laughs> you follow what we are after here? Mm -hmm. You are in such preponderously changing times. And the, the dualities of, of reality are so vast. Those who are ensconced in an old paradigm and others who are playing and this game and beyond. Pretty big leap, yes? Yes. What else shall we talk about? Oh, let's see. There are good things coming, you know. Yes. Do not think that it, it is disheartening or everything's going to fall apart. But uh, your intentions, your clarity of mind are of utmost importance. All those things count. Go ahead, Sue. Well, and as I shopped yesterday for uh, the solstice meal that we've put together and I'm in the store I, I look at all the abundance and 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 felt that this is what this celebrating is about is how fortunate I am and how, there's this abundance that I'm able to go into the store and splurge a little bit to celebrate but you know not yeah. shop like that all year long well, that is a good attitude and and let's say this that the abundance you see is a collective agreement of the area of abundance that you, you create, let's say, to make all this available. And uh, there are many people who are still mindless, but not the way they used to be. More people are aware of it's Christmas, it's the holidays, uh, the solstice. I will celebrate. And when you celebrate, remember, celebrating is about what? enjoying life being happy. being happy yes grateful to be alive. yes mm -hmm. and so and so you celebrate with those that you care to celebrate with that are grateful for one another and uh, uh, today there's uh, all kinds of splittings in celebration lots of few people are finding the emptiness in celebration because there, there's not a lot of gratitude there's a lot of should you follow Mm -hmm. Expectations. Expectations, or I'm supposed to do this, or I have to do this, or, or this is what we always did. So all of this is changing dramatically. It is changing so fast that you can't tell how fast it's changing. And yet you know the year flew by. Yes. The next year will be slower, and then slower still, and slower still. Remember the acceleration of the nanosecond? It was hard to tell and then boom, it was flying. Mm -hmm. We remember we said to many of you in 2007, it's going to move to 100,000 fold. People yeah. said, whoa, how could that possibly be? We've just been in 10 years of 100 fold and 10 years before that of 10 fold. 
people wrote and said to our vehicle, I don't sense anything yet. And then it wasn't too long into the year. <laughs> uh, go back and look at some of the occurrences. Uh, things really accelerated. So just to give an overview quickly, 2014 will be about a greater simplification. Uh, less commitments, less complications, uh, pruning, uh, uh, shaving away what's not necessary to make life uh, more compact, more efficient. We see many dramatic changes, but nothing to wipe out the planet in larger terms. We see big paradigm openings. Uh, uh, people have to factor in the larger discoveries about ancient visitors, cosmic influences. All of this will go to an accelerated level. Uh, the Catholic Church, again, will want to vie for control over this by opening the or managing the heart chakra of the planet. Let's help those less fortunate. Uh, let's help those less fortunate by helping them figure out that they keep themselves less fortunate by their thoughts. So the higher frequency is right. to show people the cheap and easy way. Change your beliefs about yourself. You change your relationship to the world at large. So, uh, you will see political clashes, betrayals, and all oh, the scandals. On the political level, uh, let's say you have mutual reception with Saturn to Capricorn, Scorpio to Cap Capricorn. Uh, many, many, many dismantles of very powerful people who have betrayed uh, on the sexual level from, from the mild to the absolutely shocking. This will be a theme that will humanity must face over the next year. There will be also a loss of great wealth, Saturn again in Scorpio. Much wealth of, of people who had a lot will lose. There will be a, a rising of greater spiritual power. The challenge will be to figure out who is deceiving you and who is not. Uh, lots of players that look like they are posing or giving information. Uh, the game is very, very, very confusing. The solution will be that many people will, in the next two years, three years, have DNA that opens. So there is a greater sort of a collective agreement and experience of those who see auras. Mm. And the advantage of this, and it will grow and grow, it's growing now, but it will reach some sort of minor critical mass that those who, in other words, it will, there will be maybe five, six, seven, up to one fifth. That would be awful lot right away. It will start. It will start with a few per hundred and then it will grow up to almost 25 per hundred within a few years. This will be a rapid acceleration of DNA opening. It will be a very inexpensive, simple way uh, for people to suddenly start saying they are seeing things. In the same way that the last 10 years, 15 years, uh, opened the doorway to people photographing things and then seeing orbs and squiggles and ships and all kinds of things mm -hmm. on their photograph. Mm -hmm. In other words, the, the photograph capturing the electromagnetic spectrum and everyone's got these smartphones now, so many of them are getting all kinds of odd things on their, on their phones. That's what they're, another good reason they are for. What will happen is that more and more people will start to see auras. And then more people will start to tell people, oh, you are seeing that, you're fine, you're not crazy. Uh, and you are seeing the black holes, this is what the black holes mean. You see this, this is what this means. And there will be a quick rise in the next few years of people seeing. And once they see, the game's over. Yeah. You follow? Yes. So yeah, then they're not interested in the tablets and the notebooks and the. Well, because they they will be this this will take over their mind. They have to see. They're looking at the tablet, but they look up at someone and they see a shape around them. They see the aura. We'll just call it the aura, but they will see the energy field. Energy fields, yeah. And they will see that there there are different colors and holes, and they will start to see even more stuff and. Oh, of course, the medical system for years has been drugging all these kind of people, but they will eventually.
eventually uh, surrender because the medical profession is being proved to be inadequate and it's one of the dying dinosaurs in terms of pharmaceuticals but it will have its crazy heyday and then it will flop over very quickly certainly in less than 10 years you follow people will pull their belief system away from all this stuff so please as our students as our friends um, our general message to all of you stay grounded stay clear stay balanced stay conscious, conscious. have fun mm. and uh, look forward to the years ahead we will uh, always uh, find a way to deliver our messages to you so we appreciate your support and uh, carry on thank you thank you our pleasure good evening good evening, good evening. Good evening.